Hello and good morning. I have recently been looking at some 1950s like formal wear gowns and I'm I'm just really entranced by the extremely structured and like tailored fit. Even when it's like drapey, it's still super structured. And the more I've learned, I realized that is because they're essentially wearing corsets but instead of you know like the past several hundred years where the corset is on the interior as a completely separate garment you put on your chemise you put on your corset you put on your other layers and then you put on your dress instead it's integrated in with the dress and still to this day lots of very like high-end you know fancy wedding gowns you know red carpet couture type looks will utilize that same you know interior structure with lots of boning and you know very corset-esque style details and it's just so cool it's something that i've never gotten to try and i think today's the day so instead of starting off with absolutely nothing we're going to go ahead and start with the the corset i am wearing here you know i i made this a while back i made several different corsets until i got the one that fit beautifully. I'm gonna take this pattern as my starting point and I'm gonna do just a little bit of alterations to make it better as an interior structure. Like I don't want it to end at my bust line like it is right now. I'm gonna go ahead and make it so that it comes up and over a little bit more coverage, a little bit more like a gown style top. I think I might lower the back just a little bit. It's a little tall right now. At least like it, it's nice for the corset it makes sense but for a, a dress to follow that same silhouette i think it's a little odd i'm gonna go for that kind of a strapless super formal gown look that's what i have in my head so far so yeah oh actually one last note that i have it's more of a word of caution <laughs> if you are going to be making a corset like you're making a bunch of mock-ups Maybe once you're starting to get close to your final, like if it's fitting really good, maybe switch your fabric to something that isn't fluorescent green <laughs> so that it, you know, does a little bit better underneath like Edwardian shirts and, and what have you. But also you do you, you know, whatever you want. I got really lazy and once I got a corset that fit me well, I was like, and I'm done. Make it out of the actual final fabric? Absolutely not. For example, for this project, I'm going to go ahead and use this interesting nylon, maybe, mesh. I, I don't remember what I got this for forever ago, but clearly I didn't use it. So we're going to use it today. And I think that this will work really nicely as the kind of sheer structured layers between bones for that foundation. I believe that bobbinet is what was often used, but this will do at least for a test round. So my plan is to add approximately two inches to the top of that sweetheart neckline. I think I might even remove these to really make a dramatic sort of plunge look. And it, using the number of panels, I know where to kind of center the height of the, the cup. I also know where to start sort of draping it down so that it blends in with the side. Like, it's very handy to work off of an existing thing. So here is the pattern that I started out with, and I've already made a number of changes, like I made the ribs a little bit longer, I also added some to the side bust, but for this pattern, we're going to go ahead and take these, put them onto other paper here, and make those further changes to the bust and to the side back. I'm going to go ahead and do the back pieces first just because that should be a very simple change just cut off where it starts to curve up easy enough for the front it is going to be a little bit more complicated because it's several more pieces that need to be taken into account as we add that two inch curve to the center and i'm, I'm going to do my best here i think it also needs to curve in again on itself because it's not just going to go up over the bust and then stick up straight into the air you want it to kind of curve back around again over the bust. I finished adjusting and cutting out all of my pattern pieces, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out on the material. I'm gonna do one set of them with them going along the straight grain, and then I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees and do another set with it going the other direction. That way, each panel is going to be cut out of two pieces with them going different directions to help make sure that everything's as strong as possible. 
So at first I just did a really rough cut around the pieces. Now I'm going for kind of like the round two of cutting all four pieces really nicely at once rather than really nicely cutting them out four times. So this is four layers right now, two for each of the different pieces on the different sides. And then I think next after this is going to be first arranging them nicely in order and then I think we can start sewing some seams. I finished stitching all of the different panels together and it is looking somewhat bodice-like. Now next is ironing the different seams so that they go you know in in one direction or split open you know, depending on what the seam is. This stuff does not want to iron. The heat doesn't actually make it do anything. It just stays up. So that's fun. So I've decided to admit defeat with the iron. They, they really want to stick up unless I specifically kind of use something to press them down while they're cooling, which is just really difficult with so many seams all together in one really tight place like this. But that's okay. As long as I sew really carefully and make sure I'm really kind of opening up the seam as I'm stitching it in the sewing machine, should be fine. Next up is going to be the boning channels and I have some thinner tape as well as some thicker for doing single versus double channeling. I like the side of the hips where it's like the most curvy to have double bones as well as the center front since there's not going to be a busk on this one. So I'm hoping that the, the double will help give extra strength where it needs it. I also made some really quick little samples just to try and kind of test that I liked how the, the tape and this fabric was going to work together and it's it's workable. And here is my first boning channel. I like to start near the, the back that way if my first few boning channels don't look amazing because <laughs> I'm out of practice at least it's in an area that's not super visible. One thing I did realize is that I do not love the look of this white thread on this like it, it's not going to be visible truly in the end but at the same time I don't love it, so I'm going to switch over to some slightly more off-white to hopefully match better with everything. Even with just boning channels alone, the fabric becomes surprisingly much more structured and stiff, but of course we are going to go ahead and toss some bones in there. I have this roll that I think will work really nicely. I have it left over. And what I'm going to do is round off each edge really quickly with a file insert it and then remove it again by like half an inch to an inch so that I can cut it off and have it kind of entirely encased within the boning channel and that of course also gets filed down really quick. And then for the ends, I feel like most of the ones I've seen of these sort of internal structures are hook and eye rather than lacing like we might see on a, you know, a corset corset. I'm gonna go ahead and try putting in some hook and eyes that I have for the occasion and we'll see how it goes. So I have added in those hooks and eyes and here is kind of our first try on and it, it's fitting pretty dang well if I do say so myself. I've already seen a couple things that I want to change like I'm going to go ahead and add a few more bones to the these side panels because I'm getting a lot of wrinkling here at the waist and a little bit right here kind of like the side bust. I'm also thinking I am going to need to take in the, the top just a little bit. I have kind of extra flare out happening that I don't love. So I think that just a pair of like little darts right there should be about enough to help take it in. I kind of wish I had a nice like firm metal, spring metal busk to help kind of keep it in there at the center, but I don't. So we're going to have to make do. I think it'll be fine though. So we're off to a pretty good start I'd say. One of the cool things about doing this sort of corset style construction is that because I'm adding on boning channels it's super super easy to just add a couple more if I decide for example that an area is a little bit wrinkly and needs just a little bit more reinforcement and that's that's fantastic I love that flexibility. Now adding a dart at the bust is something that is it's not I'm gonna say typical but because this is an under thing, I'm super not stressed about having like a visible dart in my design here. It's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not bothered. So I finished adding all my extra bones and it is now excessively boned at this point. It's, it's, a, it's a corset. That's, 
that is what I have ended up with here, but that's okay. You know, it's just going to be a very, very uh, strong foundation. And the, the bust is also looking much better. Like it's maybe not completely perfect, but this is absolutely workable. Like it's, it's definitely sticking much more closely to my chest in a way that I think will work really, really nicely. So next up, I think I need to cut off all of these little tabby bits at the bottom here. And then I also need to sort of clean up this top edge because it is a little jagged. I'm hoping that this is okay as a neckline. It's hard to tell when you're wearing something under it, right? Because that's not the same as like, as like seeing what it would look like Actually, hold on. All right. So if we, <laughs> this is a really weird look, but if we pretend that this is kind of what the finished neckline is going to look like, it's not bad. Like it feels very formal gown-esque. Like maybe I could have gone with a little bit more coverage at the, the side here, but it's not bad. I like, I think that works. I think that is definitely a possibility and I don't feel like I'm falling out. I don't feel like, I wanna test if you can, don't look. Okay, it might not hurt to wear pasties just in case, but for the most part, fancy, formal gown style foundation top achieved. All right, let's get it cleaned up. So in addition to getting all of the edges cleaned up, I think another thing I'm gonna do is remove this center back closure. These hook and eyes are on a lot of the original 1950s style gowns with this sort of foundation layer, but you know, it's also on a lot of them zippers. And I think this is going to be a lot more friendly for me being able to put the gown on all by myself because goodness gracious, this is a pain in the butt when it's in the center of your back and the garment is so tight that it's really hard to rotate it around. So let's just remove it. We're going to unpick this seam easily enough and then just stitch this right on top. Easy as that. Here we are. It is looking pretty dang good if I do say so myself. The zipper is so much better, so, so, so much better than using the little hooks. Like the, the hooks are fine if you have somebody to help you, but for being able to put it on yourself in anything resembling a decent amount of speed, zippers, fantastic, highly recommend. Very excellent invention whenever that happened. So for the bottom edge, I did clean that up first, got it all nice and trimmed away. And then I put on the binding that covers this bottom edge first. And then what I did, when I do my initial trimming for all of the bones, it's kind of like an approximate level. And then I need to go back in and kind of test whether or not I, they have enough room for me to sew on that top binding. And if they don't, I'll go ahead and trim them again, file them smooth, put them back in until I know that I have enough room for this entire top binding to fit without the sewing machine accidentally hitting a bone. So that is where we're at now. And I've I'm pretty dang happy. Like, I don't think that this twill tape is the best choice for binding an edge. It's great for bones. You probably want to use actual like bias binding like fabric for an edge, but it's okay. For right now, it's fine. So next, now that I am all foundationed up, I think we can go ahead and start draping the fabric, which is going to be very fun. Here is my first draping fabric. Originally, I was going to do this on the dress form, but it just, it doesn't fit her the same way it does me. Like the back gapes and the front is too much, like it just didn't quite work out <laughs> to drape on her. So I've been looking at a lot of 1950s gowns lately, and I've noticed that there's, there's kind of a, a trend of what was in fashion at the time, particularly for that like kind of fancy formal evening wear sort of look. A lot of these ones with lots and lots of draping are, are really, really cool. You can see how using a lot of very light, thin fabric and sort of 
gently draping it about in a way that it stays close to the curves but creates lots of uh, texture and visual interest is just really really cool. I also think there's an element of playing with really tight areas and looser areas is just visually interesting and also fun draping wise. It's really interesting to sit here playing with how I can drape the fabric around and it kind of just looks like a dress instantly which is very convenient. One big trend I noticed a lot of was having a very form-fitted bodice and then relatively form-fitted below as well and then like big kind of flouncy bits like a big bow or a big like gatheredy swoopy bit kind of here right at the hips to help create that sort of illusion of you know smaller on top and then bigger hips give kind of a more dynamic figure and shape like which I, I can appreciate. There were also all of these like wiggle skirt plus a big poof back fake skirt. Uh, some of them detachable, kind of like a lot of modern wedding dresses have the sort of a detachable train situation, but also a lot were definitely integral to the dress. That's how it's meant to be worn with a big like fake back skirt, wiggle front skirt. Very interesting. I got a couple different fabrics to play with. So that was kind of a slinky, very light sort of satin deal. You might be able to tell from the noise that this is a taffeta. I was curious to see how one would pleat and drape versus the other. It's kind of funny with only one of the draping sides done, I'm getting very like late 1800s worth vibes. So many dresses with one half of the bust, a different color, usually white. Every time I look at one of those dresses, I keep on thinking like, it kind of looks like you just forgot to do one boob. I can see the appeal, like there's something kind of visually interesting about this, but let's go ahead and get the other half taken care of. Creatively, I feel like this is really fun. Like I remember seeing one of the dresses had like a buckle at the side here, like so drape and then a buckle. And I'm like, oh, I could, like I can totally see how just securing that with a kind of a big visual interest buckle at the side, like that would be really fun. You know, I was thinking that I would really strongly prefer the satin. I felt like in my mind's eye, that was like the go-to look, but I gotta say the, the taffeta is kind of really winning me over. I think it pleats more nicely, more crisply. All those formal 1950s dresses I saw pretty much fell into one of three categories. The first was super gathered and pleated, which I just showed you. The second one though, uses these really nice, heavily embellished fabrics. And instead of trying to drape them in a, in a very kind of pretty, little delicate way, it's much, much more about creating this super strongly tailored looking silhouette. It's kind of hard to replicate with just a very quick moment of draping, but this highly embellished look which I think is just a very interesting contrast to the more gathered style. I, I really dig it. In that same category, I would say, are these ones that use like a lace mesh sort of overlay type fabric. I, I also think that could be really, really beautiful to do something, you know, very, very tailored with this lace overlay. I, I admit, I doubt my skills in creating something super tailored, but it would be kind of a fun challenge. Our third type of dress that I'm honestly not actually really considering for my project is anything made out of chiffon. Uh, often I would say instead of being a wiggle dress like the, the previous two styles, it usually it's more of a gathered skirt, very big and floofy like a beautiful ballerina. And the top is some sort of chiffon confection, you know, maybe some extra embellishments. Sometimes they would take it and kind of make like this sort of false, top off the shoulder sleeve situation as part of the top, like all sorts of interesting things. The reason that I got this was because I thought it might be nice for like little decorative elements, like a very different sort of texture and sheerness compared to the other things. But even if I don't end up using it, I feel like if nothing else, it'll be a very nice sort of shawl to go with the eventual finished gown. You may have noticed that there is 
a little bit of a theme with today's fabrics. And, you know, you're right. They are all from Zaloof Fabric, who are the kind sponsors of today's video. I will, of course, talk a little bit more about them. But while I'm doing that, I'm actually going to try and spend a little bit more sort of play time creatively kind of trying to drape the different fabrics on my form or on me because I, I really haven't settled on which one I want to use. So I'm hoping that if I keep playing with them, eventually I will settle on this is the one. So anyways, let's get to it. Zaloof has been a go-to resource for top designers and dress manufacturers for over 35 years. Recently, they've started selling their dead stock fabric that's left unused by the fashion industry to consumers at home like you and me. Dead stock fabric is fabric that you know, ended up not being used by the, the fashion industry for that season's whatever. And unlike what my uh, selection <laughs> might show, uh, they offer a wide range of colors, fabric types in solids, prints, anything that you might be looking for. I was really, really inspired just looking at their homepage because they, they have this way of displaying their fabrics on a dressed form so that you can really get a sense of scale and what the pattern looks like in proportion to a human body. Another thing that I very much appreciate is that on a lot of their fabrics, they will have a video that plays, that shows you like how sheer the fabric is, kind of shows how it drapes, they'll, they'll stretch it in different directions, like all the same information that if you were buying fabric in person at a store, you'd kind of sit there and get all that same information. So it's, it's really nice to have that built into the online resource. Definitely check them out. I'll put a link down in the description. Go see if you see anything that strikes your fancy and, you know, inspires you to want to make a dress. I, I'm really excited to play with these. I've spent the last couple days just kind of fiddling about trying to decide what I like the best. And there is something about the way that this, like, pleats and, and folds and gathers that I'm just really, really digging. So I think what I'm gonna do is a wiggle dress out of this taffeta-esque material. And then maybe if I feel ambitious, I might add some extra bits that are out of one of the other fabrics. At this point, I think I'm actually pretty dang happy with how the the top half is looking. It could use a bit more jishing, but I think I've got the, the kind of bones in place. So what I can do now is cut away the excess fabric. There was one particular photo of a Italian actress, I think, from the 50s. I'll put it here. But there was one particular dress that I just really, really loved the kind of fine, fine pleating action of. I do think that her fabric is a little bit more fine, a little bit more uh, thin and drapey, so it's, it's not gonna be an exact duplicate, but I really dug the look of it. So that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. So, I have cut away the excess along the bottom here so that it's kind of like a good couple inches beyond where the waist will eventually be. Uh, you know, kind of a, enough that I have sort of a, a buffer zone, but not so much that I have tons of excess fabric hanging down below. Then I went ahead and I stitched all of these pleats along the top bust just to really kind of reinforce that that's where I want them to be without 10 million spiky pins everywhere. So I, I think that is going to be pretty nice. I also trimmed away the excess insides, maybe two, two and a half inches of fabric that I'm going to next need to secure down so it stays nice and neat. Kind of like a, like a self-facing almost. Also, oh my gosh, I've been sitting here futzing around with this back opening area and I've kind of putzed around with several different iterations of how I might go about <laughs> doing this closure. Like part of me is really tempted by some of those like super, super complex, like late Victorian bodices where like it closes one way and then it has a piece that goes over and then another piece that goes over and then it like a hook and eyes everywhere. And as much fun as that sounds, I think I'm gonna go for the 
the actual practicality of the 50s, even for like really nice formal gowns, it was usually just a single zip. Not always. I did, I did find at least one example of one that had like a complex closure, but most of them just a easy peasy zip. So I am all done with this center back zipper and it's functional enough. Now I've also stitched this top facing where the front of the fabric just wraps up and around the back. I think now I should be okay to remove all of these little white basting stitches and hopefully it still lays correctly and looks good. So let's find out. All right, that went surprisingly well. I feel very fancy and the pleats have indeed mostly kind of stayed where they are, which is fantastic. I do feel like this center back area is sort of popping out. So I think that maybe the, the tension is too high there. So I need to undo that, that one area and restitch it so that it lies nice and flat. But otherwise, I think we're doing pretty dang good. So now, now is actually finally time for adding the skirt. Now, I think I want the skirt to look basically the same as the bodice, the same sort of taffeta material with a ruched detailing that I think looks very, very cute. But I think it needs something to hold on to the same way that this is holding on to the foundation layer, but it doesn't need to be something quite as boned and robust as this is. I think I can get away with just a single layer, simple underskirt, just with like some dart to the waist. And then I think I can toss the ruching over top of it. I finished adding darts all along the top near the waistline here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this area here, this little square out. This is where the zipper's gonna go. This, this is the only thing I have that is even kind of going to work, which I feel very silly, but at least it shouldn't be visible at all in the end. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna not stress about that. Once I got all the seams for this under layer on, including the zipper all working and functional and beautiful, I put it on the dress form and then I started sort of just draping this taffeta fabric over it again and again and again, like really an absurd amount of times trying to figure out like what exactly I wanted it to be. And I think I finally, finally figured out what the plan is. So right now the, the over piece of fabric is still just one really big rectangle. It is about 60 inches wide on the fabric here, although I have a very deep hem and then some of it gets tucked up in here. So the actual finished length is 41, but obviously if you were gonna do something similar, that would depend on your own height and how long you want the skirt to be and all that. But the the length that it goes around, around the form is 130, two-ish or approximately three times around your hips like around the biggest area is kind of what this was it may be a smidge shy of that but it's really close if I held it like tight it'd be about three times around so that is what this length is that we're working with here and what I've done is start at the center back it has like a little fold there but not much so I've started at the center back I've gone around the front and you can see I've added a few kind of deep tucks, deep pleats to act as darts because I don't actually feel like darting it, but I need some way for it to be a little bit smaller at the waist. Now that I'm pretty happy with how the pleats are laying, I went ahead and pinned each of them in so that once I took it off of the mannequin, it would still be nice and together like this. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and whip stitch these edges together so that that inner skirt layer and the new outer skirt layer are nice and joined at the top. And then what I'm gonna do with the rest of all this is kind of a decorative pleating action. So let's turn it around. So right now it is one rotation around the dress form, if that makes sense. Then I'm gonna take this guy and then kind of starting here and keeping some tension on the waist here, I kind of pull up. You can gather, you can pleat. In fact, I think for in the end, I'll probably end up pleating it because I think it's gonna work out nicely. And I'm gonna kind of loosen up these bottom layers a bit by pulling them down, but I wanna keep that top layer relatively tight. And then I'm just gonna wrap this around. 
So my idea is that I'm going to secure all of this together in some sort of like band to keep all the pleats tucked and, and happy. And then this will be kind of like a little butt skirt tail. I think that'll give it a very nice kind of distinctively 50s flair. Uh, and it'll also mean that I can tuck this back here and fully hide where the, the center back is. Not that there's anything to hide, like because it's a wrap skirt style, it actually hides its own zipper and everything, which I think is gonna be pretty handy. I finished up the skirt. It's a little bit awkward looking when it's not on a body, but we're doing pretty good. I'm, I think I'm gonna be happy with how this drapery bit falls at the back. While I could be done, I wanna add just a little more pizzazz. You know what I mean? So what I think I'm gonna do is this fabric, which I really love, it's just, I don't know if you can see it on camera, it's got a lot of like sparkle and shimmer because the way these little fibers like are all different directions and hit the light. I think that what I wanna try and do is make one of those funny little half skirts. From the back, it looks like a ball gown, but then from the front, you can see that it's a wiggle skirt. I think that this is gonna be a really cool, like dramatic addition, like a cape, but for your butt. I think it's gonna be good. And bonus, I think it's gonna be really simple. I think it's literally just a big rectangle that you pleat together at the top and add a waistband done. And because the top is corseted, it should support that extra weight really, really well. And we are all done. I am, I think, the fanciest I have ever felt in any of my outfits. Like, I, I love all of them in different ways, but I feel fancy. The gloves, I think, definitely contribute to that. I feel a little bit like Anastasia. I'm into it. But, yeah, I feel dang cute, and I feel like this was definitely a type of creativity when it comes to sewing that I haven't done a lot, like super drapey drapey type stuff. It's neat to like make a solid form and then build stuff on top of that or build pieces that are meant to go with each other. Just very fun. I kind of like the funny little tail that's included as part of the skirt. It seems like it's in a lot of the extant stuff and so I was glad I was able to really easily kind of include it as part of the skirt design. The downside is that the over skirt, the, the butt cape situation here, it's unfortunately just a little tiny smidge shorter than the decorative flounce. So I could probably put a pin in it or something to make it a little shorter, just hidden underneath the skirts. Alternatively, I did give it a try to take the flounce out and put it over top of the waistband so that it went over the back half skirt situation. And I think it doesn't look too bad. Like, it looks relatively purposeful given that it obviously matches the fabric for the front. You know, it's not perfect, but passable, I think. I'm really glad that I was able to do something so that I could include two different fabrics, which one, you see a lot in the, you know, 50s gowns and things, but also it's just, it's cool to put coordinating fabrics together. Like, that was really fun. When I, like, put on the little shawl, the chiffon shawl over top, which you see, you do see in the 50s, but as soon as I did that, my mind instantly went, oh, I look like I'm going to prom. Or kind of like a, a bridesmaid or even honestly a bride, just like the black version of a like wedding dress. I think it's a kind of a testament to how, how well those designs of the early to mid fifties really took hold and kind of for the next 70 years have really, really informed our versions of what formal is. Obviously there's been lots of other things that have come since as well, but a lot of the dresses, I was like, I could literally see that on the red carpet today. Absolutely. But anyways, I think if you haven't given it a try to do like a firm foundation, it, it doesn't need quite as much 
bones and panels as I did. I went, I think, a bit overboard based on what I'm seeing of the extant versions of this style. But if you haven't tried doing like a firm foundation and then like drapery or even even the smooth styles, but it's still doing the supporting so that you don't have to have straps and stuff, like it's very fun. Do recommend. <laughs> Thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Zulu Fabrics. I had a lot of fun playing with very, very affordable fabrics to, you know, try something I haven't tried before. And I hope you guys give them a check out. All right, see you later.